Working in a call center is a bit like putting together a 500-piece puzzle. One piece represents a customer with new computer technical problems. A few calls later, there's another piece, a customer frustrated by an erroneous charge on their statement. Later in the day, you get a piece that represents a customer trying to figure out where to send a return. All day long, call center representatives work to find solutions for a host of different customer problems, general questions, technical problems, billing issues, complaints, returns, service concerns, the list goes on. Finding resolutions to these problems is a bit like finding the right place for each puzzle piece. All fitted together, it's a portrait of a day in the life of a customer service agent. If it's not already clear, the types of customers and the problems they present vary from day to day and even call to call. If you think about callers like different passengers on a bus, you'll see that not only does each one look and sound different, but each has his or her own personality and challenges. That means they also have their own concerns or reasons for calling customer service. Despite that, there are some common caller behaviors that most call center agents face in the course of a career, or maybe even a day. Let's take a look at a few common caller behaviors. Chatty Chet. Chet just wants to chat about anything and everything. These types of callers slow your productivity and keep other callers waiting. Work to keep Chet on topic without seeming rude or uninterested. Blame Game Bill. It's all your fault, according to Bill. And while you know better, it's best not to engage in passing blame around. Apologize genuinely where necessary and find a solution that all parties can agree to. Know it all Ned. Ned may have dialed customer service, but he appears to already have all the answers. Engage him with words like we and us so he feels a part of a team solution. Important Irma. Irma is the consummate VIP customer who expects special treatment. She may even hit you with a comment about how long she's been a customer or a don't you know who I am? Show them you're capable of handling their concern and tell them when you're going the extra mile to do something for them. Angry Al. So many callers will be angry, like Al, before you even accept the phone call. The key here is being patient and calm and finding a quick and acceptable resolution. Ladder Lisa. Lisa wants to speak to your supervisor almost as soon as you answer her call. Reassure Lisa that you'll get to the bottom of her concerns and work swiftly toward a solution. Yellin' Ellen. Some people yell because they're angry and some people yell because it's just their style. Adjust your volume accordingly and speak to them in a regular speaking voice. Don't answer their yell with a yell. Perplexed Patricia. Perplexed Patricia isn't quite sure what she wants. This item or that one, this return option or a different one. It's best to approach her with complete honesty and use examples of other customers to help her decide. Friendly Frank. Yes, even in the midst of difficult callers, a nice, friendly guy like Frank will pop up. They are a bright spot in a difficult day. Tell them how much you appreciate them and do something nice for them if you can. String you along Sam. Sam may listen to every detail of every offer and seem totally interested until it's time to ask him to sign on the dotted line, and he says no. There's not much you can do in this situation except work to get the next caller. So how do you know what type of customer or customer problem each call will be? Some of it you will learn as you go. Some of it has to do with assessing your caller's communication style so you can find a satisfactory solution to their problem. Here are a few steps that will not only help you identify the concern, but also assess the customer. 1. Listen. Start by listening. After all, the caller dialed you to express their concerns. Give them the floor and listen actively. That means giving your full concentration to what is being said. 2. Put yourself in their shoes. It can sometimes be easier to identify customer problems and caller behaviors if you step back, look at the situation, and try to see it from the customer's point of view. What would you want done? How would you want to be handled? 3. Ask questions. Customers don't always have the tools to fully explain what their problem or concern is. That's where asking a few smart questions can help shed light on the situation. Summarizing the customer's answers and repeating the information back to them can show you understand their concern. Just like human beings have different likes, looks, and personalities, customers dialing a call center will present you with a host of different problems and concerns. There are some common caller behaviors that agents will deal with, including chatty, 
angry, perplexed, and know-it-all customers, to name a few. Identifying not only customer behaviors, but customer problems can be accomplished through a fairly easy three-step process. That involves active listening, trying to understand the situation from the caller's point of view, and asking smart questions to help you identify what type of customer you're speaking with and what type of problem you need to find a resolution to.